So to keep this portion short uh, of the video, I've tried to record this multiple times, but it gets to a bit too long for a review. Um, I would say don't waste your money on the Elgato low profile boom arm, the white version or the black version. They both cost around $99. It's way too expensive, especially for what it's just gonna do is just sit there on your desk or whatever and hold your microphone. If you are looking for something that's going to be in white, fine, fine, send out the BM88 for review. That's what's gonna be in this video. They have other versions of microphone boom arm. So it's not just the low profile boom arm in white as well. And you can find all the links, all of that in the description. It's a sponsored link, meaning I get a kickback if you purchase it off of Amazon. Um, no money switched hands. They just sent out the product for a review. And I wanted to go ahead and tell you guys about some accessories that are in white and in another video, but stuff happened IRL. So I have to make this video instead. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Again, not trying to bash Elgato or anything like that. It's just unfortunately, when it comes to the streaming space and what's available to us right now, um, more and more companies are starting to make cheaper budget, more budget friendly options of items that people need and they see what Elgato's doing and they're making cheaper options and more budget friendly options or wherever. Are all those going to be good? No. Is all the build quality going to be good from those companies? No. But again, it's nice to have a healthy competition because the more that other companies do this, and the more that Elgato puts out products, the more budget friendly options that we're going to have. If we just wait out or wherever a little bit longer, we can find budget friendly options um, and not pay two to three times, sometimes one times the actual price of what the product should cost. In my personal opinion, the Elgato low profile boom arm should only cost $50, maybe 60, just because it's made out of metal. Um, other than that, you should not be paying $99 for either version. If you don't believe me, I'll have a portion after this video that is going to be from two different content creators who talk about their frustrations with Elgato's software and their microphone boom arm. Um, so I'm just going to put that portion after this and then we'll get into the review of the Fine Fine BM88. Again, had to re-record this because I didn't want it to seem like I was just bashing the product wherever for no reason or anything like that. And um, I'm gonna try to keep this uh, review kind of short if I can. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for understanding. And again, here is the Fine Fine BM88 review. Elgato Key Lights. I was a new content creator and I needed lights for filming videos, but I really had no idea what I was looking for. All I knew is that the key lights from Elgato were popular and I saw tons of streamers and other YouTubers using them, so I bought a pair. And yes, if you're a Twitch streamer or you just need a simple light for your Zoom calls, the key lights do the job. But the problem is, that's not me. When I make videos, I move around my office constantly. I film from multiple angles and the Elgato lights are just not the right tool for the job. There are no physical controls on the lights. Anytime I need to adjust the brightness of the lights, I have to turn on my computer or phone, connect to the light, and make the adjustment. And when you're moving around and filming, not having those physical controls gets old fast. Now in fairness, that part's on me. I should have done a bit more research and realized that live streaming lights are not the same thing as professional video lights. But it's not all on me. Part of my frustration is the software. Elgato Control Center was painful for me to use. My lights would just disappear from the app and I'd have to factory reset them over and over to sync with the app. There are other arms like the Elgato Low Profile Arm, which has sort of this magnetic cable management thing, which is very cool until you start pulling the cable and then it pops off the magnet covers and it kind of becomes a little bit annoying and a little bit of a hassle. I suggest going with the Fine Fine BM88. Um, I'll put the price on screen for how much it costs, but I will also say there are companies out there who also have low profile boom arms. I just haven't seen ones in white. They're mostly in black right now, but they're, they look fairly, fairly, really cheap. In my personal opinion, they look more plasticky. Um, and I'm not really sure about their build quality or anything like that. Cause I haven't tested them. Maybe I will do in the future just to kind of do a roundup or wherever of the low profile boom arms. But again, I'm not trying to just bash them as a company or whatever or deface the company, but it's just my personal experience with working with Elgato uh, products, whether it be uh, software or anything like that. We're not allowing people to know the actual truth before they buy a product. And again, that's the point of this champ. So first off, the thing that really, really bothers me with the Elgato Wave uh, LP or the low profile boom arm is the actual clamping mechanism. Um, 
there is supposed to be a little pad right here. As you can see, it's completely came off. It's not even really that cushiony or anything like that. This is supposed to clamp obviously to your desk or wherever, um, and it's supposed to have a cushion right there so it doesn't damage the bottom portion. And as you can see up top, this is supposed to be, this paper thin thing is supposed to be a cushion as well. Obviously, you know, having it on my desk, all I did was switch from a desk that's like this one or wherever, that's a 72 inch um, Husky workbench or wherever, I switched to it from another desk and that's all I did. And this is the result, the front little foam piece or wherever that clamps to the desk, this or wherever, like there's no cushion here, like at all. And again, you're paying $99 and it's paper thin cushion. It is pretty hefty or wherever. So I guess that's why you're paying $99 because of it. But that's my first gripe and complaint about it. And when we go over here to find fine, again, it is, it's actually thin. The, the, the little mesh or wherever it, and the cushion is actually thin, but it feels actually more premium than this paper, cardboard, whatever you want to call it as a foam piece or wherever. And on top of that, the ring is better down here than this flat piece, because as you can see with this flat piece, this little screw right here is sticking up and it's supposed to be uh, leveled with the cushion. But because that is sticking up and there's no cushion, Obviously, you're going to damage the other and the bottom side of your desk. Again, you're paying $99, whereas this is only like $54 or so um, on Amazon. And on top of that, Fine Fine is known to always have sales and coupon codes and stuff like that. And you really are not going to find that with Elgato, just being 100% serious, unless you find like a refurbished model of something. Um, and then on top of that, like I said, you got a nice little foam thing around this little ring and it's not going to have the issue as you've seen with the Elgato. This part is again made out of metal. It's the same uh, mechanism at the bottom wherever for ratcheting and rotating. The next thing that I have a problem with the microphone boom arm from Elgato, I might get a clip of somebody else saying it or wherever and telling you guys about it, but it's these little mechanisms that magnetically attach to the top of the microphone boom arm and you put your XLR cable through. If I could go back or wherever, I probably would have just stuck with a scissor microphone boom arm until Fine Fine or other companies started um, seeing that, you know, the success of the low profile boom arms and start making their own. Um, yes, I would have had to wait like two years or so, but at the same time, I just, I don't feel like I got my money's worth out of this microphone boom arm. I, this, especially not at $100. But the thing about this mechanism is that even if I pull the the XLR cable, the, the actual casing that keeps it or wherever, it's not gonna pop off. You actually have to slide the casing back to pop off and get to the XLR cable, which is ingenious because like I said, if you're moving your microphone boom arm around for whatever reason, um, with the Elgato one, like I said, it's it, this mechanism would just pop off. Um, especially for it being on top as well, um, which was another weird choice now that I have this one. And the, again, the orientation is like this. So the XLR cable is actually underneath and it just comes up at the end or wherever and then connects to your microphone, which is a more cleaner look in my personal opinion. And like I said, it goes underneath and it completely goes all the way to the base where you would plug this in and then have the XLR cable. I think this is a better way of doing it in my personal opinion. I know Elgato has a hole at the at the end right here where you can have the microphone uh, XLR cable go up or down, which is nice or wherever, I guess, innovation in that department. But having the, the little magnetic pops up or wherever, it's easy. It makes it easier for putting the cable in, I will say that. But usually with this these microphone boom arms, you're gonna put the cable in and never like remove it. So it's good in the initial sense when you first put it in, but after that, why do you need it to constantly pop out? It's just the one of those things that's like, oh, it's cool and a gimmick, but you're never really gonna experience it after you first put the XLR cable in, unless again, you're moving the microphone off, boom arm around and it keeps popping off. Unfortunately, we have the Elgato type uh, thing up here where you have to uh, ratchet it and, and almost over torque it. But again, 
I never had an issue with this so far. I've had this one for about a week and a half now, this microphone boom arm. And even in that experience of time, wherever I, I noticed I can actually just do this by hand and not use a set of pliers or wherever, like I feel like I have to do with all the Elgato stuff. So that's an improvement. But at the same time, you still have the same mechanism. Even like the ball head and stuff is very, very similar to um, what Elgato has on their stuff um, as far as proprietary uh, ball head or whatever putting it together. Uh, luckily inside the package it does have this adapter for your microphone and it, uh, microphone and it also has another adapter inside so you have pretty much three different types of uh, connecting points to connect some type of microphone uh, yoke or the microphone directly or whatever so you're covered in all those regards um, straight out the box though it will connect straight uh, to the microphone yoke of the uh, the AM8 here in white from Fine Fine. Again, they sh they shipped it out for this whole white setup and everything. I do have a black version that I did a microphone review on. So if you want to know how this sounds, I'll leave a link in the description to that. And thank you again, Fine Fine, for sending this out. Um, it does have a USB and a XLR connection, so you can you know have whatever you need to have for your uh, microphone, whether you have a XLR uh, interface or not, you're still ready to go. It's a dynamic microphone. Again, there will be a link to the review down in the description for this microphone. The only thing about it is, is that they have a black, a black version, a white version, and a pink version. Unfortunately, they all come with this black yoke. I don't know why, but other than that, I think it looks fantastic with the bait of the bm88 from fine fine i do see that this one will probably start scraping and stuff you can see some imperfections maybe uh right here on this part and i barely been like using it or whatever taking it out of the box and stuff um and unfortunately like i said the the, the finish or whatever is gonna have that scraping uh, i guess of paint or whatever you want to call it off but still for this price point and like i said there's even cheaper um uh, low profile boom arms that are in black and they're just probably like plastic or whatever but they still get the job done i think that we should be you know pumping these kind of stuff up for content creators and everything because this is not only taking something that has been an innovation or whatever in the content creation space but you know more and more companies are adapting you know these features and these products or whatever and seeing what works for content creators but they're giving it to us in a more affordable way you could get this technically with the deals and stuff that constantly goes on with fine fine you could get this microphone and have a usb cable that comes with it um, you can get this low profile boom arm again that comes with everything you need to attach the microphone for the same price as the elgato low profile boom arm so again thank you fine fine for sending out the products for this kind of review and comparison video i just wanted to go ahead and do a broad overview of it and everything i think it looks fantastic i think it looks great again just worried about the little bit of blemishes and wear and tear or wherever on the actual microphone boom arm itself but again if you're purchasing stuff you should be a little bit more gentle and and mindful of what you're doing with your products and everything like that especially hard-earned money you know don't blow it on the low profile boom arm from elgato i know they just dropped a white one everybody pushes it but there's other options out there that you need to be aware of so with that being said hopefully you guys continue to have a squid-tastic day god bless you and yours deuces everybody much love i will see you guys in the next product review